Hello there, guitar enthusiasts. Today I'm going to talk to you about loopers. As you know, if you've been before in my channel, or if you've seen any of my performances, I really like using loopers, and I've used quite a few over the years. And uh, I'm not just a casual user. I actually dig into them and try to see what's the features, what is it that I can use live, or what is it, what is it that I should use just for practice purposes. Um, and quite a few folks have uh, been asking me questions about them for the same reason. So in this video, I'm going to give you a little bit of a player's perspective. I'm not going to get into the detail or into the um, specifics of each one of the pedals because I feel that's something that you can get from Google much faster than from me. What I'm going to give you is my perspective as a player. What is it that I thought it was more important about this, each one of these pedals, which ones work best for me in live playing situations, which ones were more reliable and why. So let's get started. Um, before I start describing the pedals or telling you about them, I would like to give you a couple hints of what is it that I think everyone should look into when they look for a pedal or what I do look into when I look for a uh, delay pedal or a sorry a loop pedal whether it is a looper or a delay the first thing is looping time if you're gonna use it as a looper you want at least I would say about 30 seconds of worth recording this way you can record loops for any riffs that you can possibly imagine and uh, still have you know a fairly lengthy uh, looping situation uh, another thing that you want and that many people overlook is you want a screen that's going to give you feedback on when is the loop going to be uh, coming back to the beginning. Another thing is redo and undo buttons. This is a big build deal breaker for me if they are not present or if they cannot be achieved with an external pedal. Because let's say that you're playing for an audience and you laid your backing guitar and you're making a nice lead on top and you know you got like a couple layers going and then you mess up your only options if you do not have a redo undo button are to start from scratch or to just quit the song altogether and they will not make you look great either way but if you have a, uh, an undo and you messed up you just erased the last layer and continue going Okay, and the last thing that I'm looking for, just the basics for a pedal, I would say is uh, it should be easy to be used. If it's extremely complicated, it kind of takes away a little bit of the fun. And it takes a lot of your time that you're going to be investing in learning how to use it and not playing music. Okay, a couple more things. So these are, to me, the basics. What I really look for when I'm, when I'm trying to find something that I'm going to have joy playing. If you want to push it a little further away, um, you probably want to look into things like storage. Uh, some of you may know, some of you may not know, but loopers, uh, some loopers have just the function of recording something that you're doing and then repeating it back to you and creating layers and this fun stuff. Other loopers allow, allow you to do something a bit beyond, which is triggering backing tracks. That is great if you, uh, if you have this capability. Uh, it's not one of the basics, but it does help a lot. MIDI connections. Um, also, it's a very cool feature for the advanced, as you can hook it to a recording software program, or to a keyboard, or to a, another uh, pedal, or an external pedal to trigger different functions, and it does a lot of... Uh, uh, it does increase the capabilities greatly. Multiple loops. Some loopers also allow you to have two loops going at the same time, two or three actually. Uh, fair, uh, completely independent from one another, but synced to one another. That's also something to look into. And, uh, and that's, just, that's basically it. So let's get on it. The first pedal that I'm going to review is the Boss JS8. This is not specifically a looper, it's actually a jam station with backing tracks that you can use the loop for. Uh, 
so let's talk very very briefly about the pros and the cons. The pros, uh, the backing tracks are great. The loops you can make very long. It, it, it uses also a memory card that you can exchange. It loads really quickly. Just fine, f sounds great. And it works also as a sound card for your computer. So you can use the speaker um, of the JS4 to just play music with your computer. And you can use the um, input jack of the JS4, uh, JS8, uh, to uh, record guitars in maybe Cubase or Logic Pro, or any of these programs. Cons. Um, it, although it's marketed also as having a looping functionality, it's not really entirely true. What happens is, after you record a loop, which you can do, instead of um, instead of doing what every looper does, which is you hit the pedal, it records, you hit the pedal again and it starts to loop back, this one will fully stop and will ask you if you want to keep this loop or you want to dismiss it, and then it will start looping. That's kind of a big downside. It, it makes it basically unusable for looping purposes, but you can still use it to record music, to um, write music and this type of thing. Uh, another con is the you cannot change the speed of the loops. Well, the thing is that they are actual recordings; they are not um, MIDI files. So if you speed them up or slow them down, uh, they will sound funny. And the last of the cons, well, is also by the way not you not really fully usable from the floor. Is I tried. You you can hook up a pedal, but it it doesn't. You you'll end up pushing buttons, it's, you can't do it all, all the way. And uh, the last one is something that I'm, every time that I get a looper or a jam station that has building tracks, uh, I expect, and that to me is definitely a deal breaker when it comes to doing loops, I expect that once I hit the stop button or the after I record my loop, and I, I'm done, and I hit the start and the stop button. I expect the looper to finish the measure before it starts to loop. I don't want it to loop right after I hit it, uh, because if if it is this way, every time that I'm doing a loop, I have to be really concentrated in hitting it right in the spot, and it's never going to be perfect. It's going to sound always like there's a glitch there, and uh, I don't like that. It's, awkward, it takes away all the fun. And unfortunately, this machine does that. It does not wait until the end. As soon as you press the, the pedal or the loop button, it will start, it, it will it will cut right there. This be, That being said, although this machine is not great for loops, uh, I own one and I love it. For playing backing trucks is great. Uh, for jamming around is great. To give you feedback about your own playing is great. Uh, it's got some guitar tones that are okay, not great, but all right. And the overall experience is good. The 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 sound quality is really really nice when it comes to the backing tracks. Moving on to the Line Six JM4. This is pretty much the same. Uh, it's the same type of machine as the Boss um, JS8. Uh, it's basically a jam station which uh, has more focus on looping cap capabilities. However, this one is meant to be used from the floor and you can indeed do so uh, without any trouble. It's very easy to use, which the JS4 is not so easy to use by the way. Uh, you will be jamming right away. The sound quality is, is phenomenal as well. Again, the, the loops, not the loops, the, the sequences that it comes with are actual performances, which means they sound real, as realistic as they get, because they are real. They are, it's a guy playing. Uh, but you cannot really change the speed without compromising uh, the quality of the performance. This one does um, wait till the end of the measure. So if you're recording something, you don't really have to worry too much about hitting the pedal in the right spot because it will wait until the end of number four before it starts to loop. 
and I thought that was really, really a great feature. Um, the, it comes with guitar tones as well, but they're not very good either. You can't really revamp it into your amp. You, you can, but it doesn't work very well uh, as it does not have a loop, loop FX uh, in and out, uh, the pedal I mean. So it's, it's not really the best for that. The pros, it, it's got a microphone among the pros that I mentioned before. So that's cool because you, you can also loop your vocals or any other uh, acoustic instrument. It's got a 33 minutes worth loops and it's got also the, you, you can also use a memory card with it. It's got redo and undo, which is really, really a nice thing. And uh, the screen has a progress, a progress bar that will tell you when the loop is going to begin again. That is, by the way, priceless. I, I love that function. Moving on, the Line 6 DL4. This is an all delay machine uh, from 1999, which has a looping, looping capabilities as well. Um, although this is not meant to be a looper, many people use it as such because it's so easy to use. Pros, easy to use, instant fun. It's, it doesn't get any easier than this. Cons, it does not have an undo, undo button. So I wouldn't probably use it live unless I'm completely certain that what I'm doing is not gonna, that I'm gonna be spot on. And still I would be a bit nervous about doing it. Another con, 14 seconds of recording time. It's an old machine, it's almost 20 years old. And uh, another con, do you don't have a screen, so you, you don't know when the loop is going to begin, other than, of course, that you're listening to it. So if you're, if you're comfortable with this, this is great, plus 14 seconds. You're likely not to make a loop that's so big so that you're going to get confused. And you cannot use uh, a delay with it, meaning that the unit will loop or will use a delay, but you cannot combine the two. Moving on, Pictronics Infinity Looper. Pros, you can use two tracks, and this is super cool because you can combine them together. They're always in sync. You can sync them in different ways, and you can use them as two different sections of your song. And what this means is that you can record the verse and, and get it recorded in one of the two loops, and then record a chorus in the other one and switch between them. And it's very cool because you can if you're playing through the verse and you want to go to the chorus next, you hit the, cor the, the other button, the loop number two button, and it will wait until the verse is finished and then it will start playing the chorus. Uh, that's great because it takes away a lot of effort of syn synchronization and it gives you the opportunity to focus on playing. All right, so more pros. Uh, loops can be super long, again, you can use a, a, an external card as well, expandable memory, um, and you have undo and redo, however you need an external pedal for it. Now let's talk about a couple cons. First, it's very glitchy, even with the latest upgrade um, on firm firmware, I found it to be um, really glitchy many issues and uh, every time that I had a performance it will behave differently so it was a little bit of a nightmare it comes with a, a piece of software to load and unload loops and sequences and it's just as glitchy as the pedal itself or um, in my experience it was maybe your experience is different if if there's something that I'm missing please feel free to comment um, but again, I found it to be a bit unreliable. Uh, another pro is that you can hook it to me via MIDI with the Beat Buddy, which is a sequence. Well, it's not a sequence; it's a drum machine uh, that you can uh, trigger real time. It's, it's a really cool invention. But uh, the synchronization is not great either. Again, we we come back to the unreliability. So, although I was, I was successful at making them work together, 
and I have a performance that I'm going to leave a link uh, down below. It it was never really an exp a pleasant experience from the standpoint of being able to um, just have fun and play. I had to pre-plan many things, and I have to, and I had uh, a lot of issues every time that I played. Uh, but this being said, if if the firm, the future firmware fixes these issues, um, is I bet it's going to be a blast to play with the two. Let's see, let's see. Oh, another con is this, it it does not really have a screen. So you're not gonna get any feedback when uh, when it comes to loops and uh, loop length. Moving on to the Dido Looper by TC Electronic. This is a very simple unit. It only has a volume and a button, a switch. So um, if if you're getting started in the looping world, this might be for you because it's as simple as it gets. You hit it once, it starts recording. You hit it twice. Uh, and it stops so it's it's super simple to use you can record really long loops with it which uh, um, maybe this is just silly of me to say but I don't really see the point of having an hour loop uh, storage in a unit with only one button uh, con it does you can't hook an external uh, extension pedal to get more capabilities this is a one switch uh, and that's that's all it's going to be. Uh, but again, if you're if you're getting started and you just want something to plug and play, and you don't want to uh, have to learn um, to read through lengthy manuals or anything, this is just fun. It's easy. It's it is very reliable. It's well built. It's a good machine. Okay, moving on. Event heights, time factor. Pros and cons. Well, this is also like the DL4. The event type is a, a delay machine with a looper built in. I believe this was made in the mid 2000s. And uh, it's got great features to it. This, uh, okay, I'll start with the pros. It's got a big screen that gives you feedback about the loop progression. Excuse me. So it's gonna tell you when the loop is gonna repeat. It's got it, it shows you the progress, and I think that's great. I really love that because you can be playing and kind of like looking at the device with the back of your eye, and you always know where you are. And when I say this, I assume that some of you will be looping something that's really characteristic, so you know exactly where the beginning comes. But some of you may be recording something more ethereal, that you need some feedback from the machine not in order. For you not to be lost. More is got MIDI synchronization, and in this one works flawlessly and effortlessly, or it did for me. I, I, it was plug and play. I was very surprised in a very pleasant way. It's easy to use. is a very intuitive pedal, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. But it's got a few cons as well. The first one, no, uh, it does not have an undo button. Oh man, that's a big uh, deal break for me. And I bet they could also fix this with an upgrade in the firmware, because it allow uh, the pedal allows you to get an external three switch um, pedal extension pedal as well, but no undo button for the for the looper. I really hope they are gonna change this because that's the only thing that keeps me from keeps it from being uh, um, you know in my top two or three. Um, Delay is not usable once you're loose using the looper as well. It's like the line six uh, as well. Is or you use the looper or the delay, but not the two of them. And the loops are short. I think they range. You can. I think you can get twelve seconds if I'm not mistaken at the highest quality. And then as you decrease the quality of the loops, uh, you get them longer up to forty four, forty nine seconds but then the, the loss of quality becomes noticeable. So, I mean, it's not too bad. I, I still dig the concept, but I wish the, loopers, the loops were a tad longer without any quality loss. Moving on to Strymon's timeline. This is my favorite, my personal favorite. It's a modern pedal 
It's extremely well sounding, super clean. It's a, basically it's an inspiration machine. And uh, okay, so here's uh, some of the pros. You can use the delay and uh, looper at the same time, which is super cool. Well, the delay or any of the effects that you have programmed. Uh, the extension pedal you can use for to control and undo and redo um, functions, which is great. I love that. That that really made my day when I read it. I, I bought it the next day. It is actually easy to use. It's not very bulky. It's just a very well thought out machine. And the MIDI synchronization works great as well. Now for the comms. Um, the screen is getting a screen, but it's tiny, which is a bit of a disappointment, and it does not give you any feedback with the loops. Uh, that's uh, that's not a big uh, deal breaker for me, but I wish they they changed this. And again, this this can also be changed with the firmware. Fingers crossed. Um, what else? What else? Okay. There's, there's also something about the undo functionality. It only does... Yeah, it, it basically the way this works is you, you lay the first track and uh, then anything that you lay on top of it, you will undo, no matter what. So it's not like you can do three layers and it will undo the last one. It will undo everything except for your first one. So that I think I didn't like so much. There might be a way to change this within the internal options, but I did not find it. And the looping time is 30 seconds. So still quite useful. And last but not least, I'm gonna talk very briefly about the Boss RC series. The being the RC50 and the RC300, the kings of the hill. Okay, so the RC300 is uh, by far the most complete, uh, complete looping station that I've ever owned or seen. Unless there's something more recent that I'm missing. Um, it works great. I've, I've read many forums of uh, some people complain that they were glitches. I've never experienced this and I've had like three over the years. Uh, it worked flawlessly uh, for me. It's got three independent loops three hours worth of recording, which is great because three hours is usually what a uh, um, show will last if you're playing covers, so you can have all your backing tracks in it. Uh, it's got more options that you can handle. Of course, the three loops you can use for different sections in a song, like you could in the, infini in the Infinity Looper by Pictronics. And uh, it's just an overall very solid machine. Um, a pro, uh, a con would be um, the same thing as the pro is, which is it's got so many capabilities and so many things, and you can tweak so much at some deep level level that you're there's going to be a learning curve to it. It's, you're going to spend some time uh, looking up tutorials and reading about it, and but it's total. I will say it's totally worth it because you can really do a lot of stuff with it. And uh, once you have it dialed to your likings, it's a, it's a machine. It's, that is it. Okay, so I'm going to review a couple of the RC series really briefly just to give you an overall perspective. RC1, it's similar to the Dido looper, but it's got a screen, which I appreciate very much. It's got only 12 minutes for uh, your loops, which is more than sufficient since you will probably never use more than four. Um, and you can hook up an external pedal to get undo, which is also killer. So this is a great machine. It's also very cheap. It's like a hundred bucks. Um, for the price, it's just great. The, the screen shows you when the loop is coming back. It shows you the, the progression. It's just, yeah, it's well worth the money. Now, RC30. It's got three hours of loops, great, just like the 300. Uh, two simultaneous loops, and it's basically a stripped down version of the RC300, which the pro that is easier to use and the con that you get a little less for the buck. It's got a built-in drum machine as well, which is 
let's be honest, it's not very good. But for occasional jams, it's great. Though still, you can you can connect it via USB with your computer. You can also do the same thing, by the way, with the Pictronics. And um, load in all the tracks, all the backing tracks for your show, which is, uh, again, super useful. You can hook up an external pedal to increase capabilities. Overall, a really well-rounded machine. And I, I don't think I'm missing any of the basics on this one. Undo as well, of course. And necessary evil. And last but not least, the RC50. This is the predecessor of the RC300. It's basically the same machine, three loops as well, but it does not have an expression pedal, and instead of three hours of recording material, you can only get 25 stereo or 49 mono. So you will not be able to get all the tracks for your show if you're playing a three-hour set, which is the nation standard, but you still get a lot for the back. And all of these RCs will wait until you, uh, um, if you have, if you're using the drum machine that's built in, and you hit stop, they will wait until the end, the end of the measure, which is great as well. Again, because this allows you to be focused on your performance and not in when you're gonna hit the pedal.